I have been studying LARP and LARP-like games for a long time. And what I want to talk about today is that it's actually incredibly hard to do this. Uh, so my goal is to share some of the pitfalls you can fall into and also try to build a, a bag of tricks that you can use. Uh, so first of all, I would like to reduce the problem a bit because there are many facets to studying LARP. And what I want to talk about today is the task of creating a reasonably true story about how a LARP played out. Uh, this we could call LARP history because it's very, very similar to what an historian does in their work. Uh, history only happens once and a lot of LARPs are only played once. And even when you have LARPs that play out several times over, every session is so different that you can look upon it as another piece of history. So it makes sense to start uh, studying LARP by trying to do LARP history. So one of the questions is, is this possible at all? After all, LARP is the art of a thousand protagonists and every one of those are going to have a, a story. I'm actually in that picture somewhere. Um, and what characterizes this is that this was the first LARP I tried to study, and I did an incredibly bad job of it. Uh, so I hope I've come a little bit further. Uh, so every one of these people in the picture have experienced a different LARP. So how could this be made into a reasonably consistent story, or even a reasonably true story? Uh, the first trick in the book is to play the LARP yourself. Uh, when you play the LARP, what you can do in the LARP is you can notice key events going on. And when you find those key events, you can start to talk to people about those key events. Uh, because it's not your experience, your individual experience, that will be the LARP history. But when you start to use those key events and uh, interview people about them, then you start to piece together pieces of a bigger story. There's a particular problem that you will have to overcome. Um, as a LARP historian, you will meet with what we call uh, and others also have called uh, the post-game lie. The fact is that the stories we tell after uh, a LARP is not that all that true. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for this. One is the memory to plays tricks on you. So while you're in the LARP, uh, you will experience things that very quickly fade from memory because the things you really remember are going to be those things that are deeply personal and deeply important in your personal story. The other part of this is a little bit of performativity because one of the reasons we have bad LARP experiences is when we don't play all that well. Uh, so uh, when all of your friends come out and say, oh, I had the best experience ever, it was such a fantastic LARP, chances are that you're going to start to reconstruct your own story from there. Uh, so this is also a reason why it's important to capture those key events because you can go back to them in interviews and you can talk to players about those things and ask them, so how did you experience that particular uh, event in the game? And this will help them get back. Another thing you can do to get back to the situation is to gather media. So if you can get the pictures up there. Another thing I would like to emphasize is don't judge the LARP. It's not your job to uh, determine whether the, uh, the LARP was good or bad. And furthermore, another thing here is that you shouldn't really look for the game uh, to see if the LARP played out as it was designed or not. Um, as players, we often judge LARP. We often talk about this was a great LARP, but that was not such a good LARP and so on. That's not the jo job of a historian. But the other thing is that you will want to know if the LARP played out as, if, as it was designed. But it's not necessarily a problem for the LARP historian that it didn't. Um, so we do think that LARP is um, 
are good if they give players a lot of agency. But if you give players a lot of agency, doesn't that mean that, would that mean that it's a problem if it turns in a different direction than the designers intended? So yes, you will want to know if that happened and you will want to figure out the reasons why. But is it a problem? Is it something you should judge? I don't think so. So just to summarize very quickly, play the game, play the LARP. And if it's a large one, if you're going to be studying Monitor Celestra, you want to be many people playing and piecing together the story together. We didn't even try, to be honest. Um, you want to talk to both players and designers, and you want to talk to the game masters to figure out all the pieces of the puzzles. Try to find those key events. Uh, and some you will observe yourself. If you're lucky, your players will also tell you, your interview subjects will also tell you about even more events that you didn't notice yourself. And finally, get your hands on as much media as you can. Uh, the media that was produced before the game, the things, the props, whatever, the things that players did within the game, the, the stories, the, the diaries, the, uh, the uh, uh, poems, whatever you find. And finally, talk, uh, try to talk to people as often as possible. It's good to talk to players also before they go into the LARP. And one of the reasons you want to collect media is that you can make good films afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>